streaming cyberspace into your place from Road America. It's the Virtual Grip Network second round coverage of the Andy Morgan Cup, the 36th season, sanctioned by the Absolute Beginner League. A warm Badger State hello and welcome on this Sunday, April 7th, 2024. Zach Shaggy Chapman joins yours truly, Bill Soups, on Hype in the VGN broadcast booth to bring you our word's eye view. As always, replay Ryan Senator, turn the knobs and push the sliders. Let's get right to it. Zach, Road America is one of my favorite tracks, both to race at and commentate from. What are your thoughts? You know, it's one of the one of the best tracks uh, that the United States has to, has to offer in terms of road racing. A lot of different mechanics involved in this. Is right now I'm watching Marcus Byfield. He's going through turn six right now. He's coming up. He's actually going in the grass. They're going to lose this lap, but he's coming up on one of the most uh, important parts of the track here. Going through hurry downs. He's going to make a left here going into turn eight. And what I was talking about. This is known as the carousel. You're, oh, and now he's going to slow down on it. So uh, let's go ahead. Let's find somebody else here. Kotek, uh, he had just came out of the carousel. He's got, going through the, the kink right here, I believe. And uh, this, is a, this is a high speed part of the track. It's going to carry you in <laughs> to uh, Canada Corner, going here under the cheese. And uh, this is we're going to see a lot of passing here. That's for sure. A lot of hard on the brakes, getting in here passing. But uh, it's going to be exciting today, Soup. Uh, we're going to have rain, rain on the forecast. So uh, it's going to be interesting today. Oh, I hope not. I left my umbrella back in the motel room. Let's see how it works out. As we get as we're getting as we're under practice, you can see the qualifying going on out there right now. They're going to grid up based on their speed. That we'll do a well. Let's tell you what the format is today. This is our second round here, but it's really races three and four. What's going on? Well, there's GT cars. The format is two sprint races. The second race inverts the top five finishers. You know, they got open setups. There's teams out there, sets of two drivers each. So if you can find a teammate they're qualifying, you can maybe draft yourself into a better qualifying position, get a better spot on the rolling start. With that said, our track is four miles around i'll know we most of our audience is from europe so i'll let you do the math for those of us here in america who are metrically challenged let's take a quick look at the points not a whole lot to talk about these points are going to reflect what went on in the opening rounds now remember we had the opening round over in brazil and there were two heat races marcus byfeld posted a first and a third david burns a third and a second photo check went he finished fifth and then got inverted and ended up on the pole. He was able to hold it. Something to note, both of those races were wire to wire. In this series, we yet to have a pass for the lead. Ludic Sauer, you know, really maybe not in the top classes, those top three guys. He has a pair of sailboats. Those are fourths. And then Josh Braid had a second, had trouble in the second race. He can only do a seventh. You know, you talk about bonus points. They give him for wins. Oh, no, for uh, laps led and for fastest lap. Marcus Byfeld has a pair of bonus points. David Burns has one, and Podocek has one as well. So that's going on. Let's go ahead and look in on some of the drivers right now that are out there. Zach, the, I see a little bit of a, of, a, of a rooster tail behind the car, but it looks pretty dry out there right now. Yeah, it's starting to starting to come down though. You're seeing guys. I was watching uh, Podacek a little bit while you're talking. He was pushing as hard as he could on slicks. He lost it there going through the S's. So it's it's going to be a difficult race here. As they go into the the feature, it's it's raining right now. But looking at the forecast, in about ten minutes or so, it's supposed to quit. So uh, when we get to the end of this first twenty laps, we may experience a different track as we go into this next heat. We're going to do our best to try to deal with tire compounds. We're getting our technology figured out with this new technology that iRacing brings in. The qualifying is done. We have a sweet 16 worth of drivers here today. So let's run through the grid right now if we're able to. If I get the permission, yes, we can do that. I'll take the top row. It's your point leader, Mike, Marcus Byfeld. He's going to be followed by the man who sits in second, David Third Degree Burns. Shaggy. Yeah, Josh Brain's going to start on the inside of row number two in P3, and Wotek Podacek is going to be on the outside of row number two. And just a real quick, the guys that have gridded, I changed my camera angle. They are all going with wets. They're going to play. Ah, 
Our top American, Edgar Shancinelli, he's going to start in fifth position. He's going to be flanked by the man who sits fourth in points, Ludwig Sauer. Neil Bamber in the number 45 is going to start P7, and on the outside in the 11 is going to be Jan Sanchez. In the number 75, it's Tony Hayes with Vincent Bream to his outside in the 10th spot. Stefan Malie is going to start P11 in the number 54, and Marcel Simone is going to start P12 in the 302. You go into the bakery and ask for a baker's dozen, they're going to give you 13 donuts, and that's right where Klaus Loudon is starting right now in 13th. He's going to be flanked in 14th by Lucas Peterson. All right, Bartosz Grzlecki. I may need a little help with that, but I think I'm pretty close. He's going to start uh, 15th there in the number 13 and rounding out the field today. He's going to be JF10. Do shape. All right, maybe? we'll go with that. Tend to shape. We'll go with that. And Grzelski, I go with that one too. That was pretty good. All right, they're beginning to roll. God, you're here with us. Round number two, race number three, the Absolute Beginner League Andy Morgan Cup. Here from Road America. And this is something too, Soup. You know, these guys haven't experienced yet. Going down this front stretch as we get ready to take the green flag, those guys P4 and back, they are not going to be able to see a thing. So they're going to have to make sure they have their breaking point mapped out and they know where they're going to hit the brakes. Put our attention out there. We're going to watch the man on the pole. It is Marcus Byfield. And uh, kind of the banana flavored machine there. Trailing a little bit behind David Burns. Burns, a veteran, trying to get the best jump he can. You can see a little bit of the rooster tail coming off both the pace car and the 16 cars that are behind him. Remember, two heats today, 20 minutes each. We don't expect pit stops unless the weather demands it. We think that everybody out there right now, Shaggy, correct me if I'm wrong, you think they're all out there on, on rain tires, yeah? That's our yeah, yeah, from what I've seen, I went back through the grid. They're all on rain tires. The only one who isn't on the rain tires is that pace car. He's, he's got a lot of nerve. <laughs> all right, coming around. Long pace lap here at Road America. Let's see where they're going down. Is this corner now? This is the action corner they're going into. If I'm seeing this right, this is corner number five. If you ever get a chance to go to Road America and you get to like wander around the alfalfa in Wisconsin there, you'd like to get to corner number five. That was not corner number five. That was corner number seven. Now they go through hurry downs. If I'm looking at this right, now they go into the heading into the carousel. If I back out of this, I believe that's where they are right now. Nope. Yeah, nope. we'll have Here to left at turn eight and then we'll head into the carousel, the double apex carousel. There we go. It's been a while since I've been to the northern part of America here. Taking a look at the radar here, it does look like uh, the rain is stopping, so we're going to get about a 15, 20 minute break before the rain picks up again. You see him heading your way. And of course, I'm having some technical difficulties, so I'll just hang in here and do this one off the best I can as you see him coming your way around 20 laps, or sorry, 20 minutes set to go. You can see Byfeld up on top in the yellow and blue machine. Burns to his outside. Honestly, if I could get a little message into iRacing, maybe perhaps a shorter pace lap at Road America. All right. It's a long racetrack, especially when they do it at pace lap speed. Now they're going down. Now, if I can get this right from my camera, it looks like they're heading down into Canada. This will be the right-hander. Now, you think you're home free till that final quarter, but, but Zach, there's a little more work to do through here. It's a little twisty section. Yeah, a little bend here, turn 13. And then uh, this is going to be interesting, too, here in the wet. Turn 14, the you know, or you know, the the hard right hander coming to the the front stretch. You see the puddles gather up there on the inside, real low. You're gonna have to make sure you avoid those puddles or get into some trouble. Now they come out of the final quarter and they go up the hill on the long back on the long front straight. Our drone camera panning around the beautiful foliage there in Wisconsin. 
you know what to do. Gather up the chicken steak, cover and the cows, because the horses are out of the barn, and it is indeed Marcus Byfeld who leads the stampede down into the first corner. Burns trying to secure second. You see the red car on the inside. That's Josh Brain. Josh Brain had the second position at a second place in one of the races that set up the season. He's racing in third right now. Podacek and Ludwig Sauer rounding at your top five. Yeah, everybody clean through turn one and two so far. Not to jinx these guys, but it looks like they were pretty smart, spread out. Didn't want to go double file. Just going to learn this rain for a little bit. Everybody taking care of it. 16 drivers took the grid. We have all 16 going. Look how they've got themselves single file now. Love the new format there with the rain. Maybe we can go on board here in a minute and see what it looks like from the eye. Maybe from the viewpoint of one of the drivers caught back a little bit farther. There we go. It looks pretty good. That's really not so bad right there. We ride on board with Josh Brain currently in third position. Pretty good vision. Yeah, definitely not blurred too bad right now. The rain stopped at a good time, but... I got a feeling this heat too, it's going to be, or this next feature, it's going to be a whole different story. They head down now. They stay in order. Everybody's still out there racing, working through the left. And oh, we got a slider out there. That was uh, the yellow car. That was Volchek Potoschek as he loses a position to Edgar Sancinelli. Sancinelli vultures one, moving up and forth. Great save, though, from the Polish driver. There is, he only lost one spot. Yeah, definitely good job by Podacek. It's uh, a little early to be abusing those uh, wet tires and screeching them like that. He's going to pay for that the next couple laps. He's going to have to take it easy and dip into some puddles here going down the straightaways. We have a Ferrari out in front. I believe Burns is in a Porsche and then another Ferrari and then the Audi of Sancinelli. There you're looking at Podacek going by. Now, that's not Podacek. That's a little farther back. That's a car similar painted to Podacek. We're looking at the battle for 13th position. There he said, Bream, Griselli, and Peterson in that mix there in 10th, 11th, and 12th. You can see the little tower on the F on the right-hand side as it scrolls through. Okay. We look at the seventh position there with Hayes side by side. And I believe Sanchez is going to get the best of that one. Yeah, it looks like Simon's going to think the best of diving in low there. As you see, real low on that apex, they all splash the puddle. That's not a turn you want to go too wide right now, Osweiss. Coming at you. Just a few minutes into our 20 minutes sprint race here. Point leader Marcus Byfeld out in front. Tip of the hat, though, for everybody. They are so clean. Ifield, Burns, Brain, Sancinelli, Podacek. Everybody spread up. We look for somebody. I don't have the graphics in front of me. Maybe my director can help me with a hard charger. Who's our best mover so far out of all of these guys? Let's yeah, right now, Grislecki's up four spots. There we go. We're looking at Grislecki. Started well back in the back. Actually on the last row, I believe. He's making his way up. There's because in the yellow car, racing currently in 11th position. He's got Peterson right behind him. Coming around, there's your, still looking at your selector. Let's go back up and check on our leader, see how we're doing the interval, just about a tick, under two seconds. We right off the bat. You know, one of our fan favorites is the number 45 of Neil Bamber. He's in a nice little battle right now as he's chasing Podocek. There's Neil. I'm sure my dad's a Neil Bamber fan. He's a big Marlboro Red fan, so he's yeah. probably out there supporting him today. That does look good. In fact, I thought Bamber had visions of maybe getting to Podocek. He might be more worried about what's coming up in his rearview mirror as Sanchez begins to close the gap. Tony Hayes pulling in the pits for some reason. I wonder if maybe he's thinking about slicks, just experimenting. Right on board with Sanchez in the tow, moving to the outside. 
not going to happen yet. You can see the Bambi protecting the cover in the inside like wall-to-wall -wall carpet. They head down now. This is corner number three. Now they head down to the action corner, corner number five. It is the left-hander. This is where you want to be at. Let's see. This is a great passing zone. We'll stay on this battle a bit. Sanchez too far back. Unless he wants to dive it down in there. Look at Bambi moving over. Now he moves over to the right. Nothing happening there. Let's jump up a pair there. It looks like Brain and Sanchinelli are in a nice battle. Look what Edgar is up to there. He's haunting Josh. That is Sanchinelli and Podercheck. I correct myself there on that. Podercheck, remember, lost that position when he made that error early on. He's trying to get that one back. Is it the Porsche stalking the Audi? Yeah, it seemed like he took it easy there. Just that lap or two after that slide, like I said, just let the tires cool back down, ran in the wet, and now he's going to go get him again. As they work their way around the, uh, the carousel there, you can hear the calliope in the background. Careful now. We don't want to make a pass. No too wide through the cake. Now they come out of there. Now you get a little bit of drive. Sanchinelli goes a little bit wide through the cake, and he loses momentum and go ahead and move Vocek back up into fourth spot. Oh, Not sure. I felt was struggling yeah. a little bit too, but Burns is back to within a second. He's seven tenths behind the leader. We ride on board with David Burns right now, trying to run down Marcus. Let's stay on this one as he's in the toe. The draft matters in these cars. Boy, he's gaining. You can see him closing as that Ferrari getting bigger and bigger in the windshield. Now he moves to the outside. Look at the defensive line that Byfeld takes. Yeah, and you know, looking at the lap times, uh, Burns just ran a 2.15.09, a second and a half faster than anybody else. So it wasn't Byfeld that made a mistake. Burns found something. He's really quick. We're looking at another battle there. You see it's still the same battle as Burns now has made the pass. Byfeld now has to settle into second. Big points here. A couple things to note. The points laid out, you get more points. There's almost like a, it's almost two points per position for like the first five or six positions. But you do get an extra bonus point. Well, not a bonus point, but an extra point in the standings if you get the win. So that, that win is actually important. So now Burns able to lead a lap and out in front. That's a good point today. Look a little hokey dunk, a little dip to do, a little up and under between Sanchez and Bamber. Bamber gets the worst of that. Nice battle going on, though, between those two Ferraris. You can see the third car in line. That's Vincent Breen. Breen trying to run up to those guys if they can. If they continue to battle, if Bamber and, and Sanchez continue to have horseplay, that's what you're looking at. All right, Volchek Podocek. He's tired of waiting. He's working on... Josh Pinky in the brain, and he gets the pass made. Boy, after the mistake, Podercheck making a charge now. Up into third. Yeah, he's another one in the 215s. Got the second fastest lap of the race. He's he's starting to figure something out. Uh, him and Burns, they're kind of in their own class right now. So your points leader, Marcus Byfield, sitting in second. And we'd like to note that we have, during this race, our first pass for the lead when Burns was able to get around Byfield of the series, of the season. And uh, Shaggy, you talked about Burns figuring something out. Once he made the pass, it, it's, it's see you later boy like you're a skater boy to, to Marcus Vico. No, yeah, I'm not sure if he just nursed the tires correctly or, you know, the track is picking up uh -huh. that much. We've had two people pit already and we've got two people pit in this lap. So I think they're predicting uh, a dry track coming in, but uh, I just don't see you making up the time of the pit stop. We'll have to see. My goodness, yeah, the pit stop, especially here at Road America. Uh, the pit lane is is incredibly long. Side-by-side -side battle, Sansonelli and Sanchez again. Sanchez moving up. He gets the best of We talked about Vincent Brain back there watching the whole thing. Well, now he's in that mix. That is a battle for fifth. 
Oh, I think we. Well, I think what's going on. I think you nailed it. Here comes Brain making the move on Sanchanilla. I think you're right. Maybe it might be a case of uh, uh, these guys are on wets and the tires are just going away. This might be the case. Yeah, I mean, you really got to change your driving style. It's a lot more lift and coast. Uh, you know, you're not trying to abuse the tires under braking because you just don't have that surface area that you have with the slick. So you got to do a good job of, you know, we say that they want the tires to be warm on a restart, but you don't want them to get too warm or then you got no grip at all. Shaggy, my timing and scoring is down. Are you able to just give a quick look at Bifel's lap time and see if, if uh, how they compare to when he started? Do you have the technology to do that? So his fastest lap of the race is actually a 2.16.61. His last lap is a 2.16.63. So he's almost that. running identical times. But Podacek and Burns, they're in the 2.12s. They're really putting it on. <laughs> I tell you, he may be running the same amount of times, but he is dropping in the standings. And Byfield now moves down to third. What a contrast to what we saw in the opening two races where it was wire to wire. We got some great racing here. Podacek made that early mistake, Shaggy. He's made up for it now. I don't know if he has enough to make up the six and a half seconds to get the birds, but but uh, it'll be fun. All right, here we're looking at Brain and Sanchez. Definitely going to be fun because, I mean, just to add to the story, he's in last place right now, but Tony Hayes just ran the fastest lap of the race on slicks. So the track is definitely changing. <laughs> but they have still... How far to go? About about uh, nine minutes left of racing to go as we see the pass there. Sanchez gets it done on, on Pinky. Look at this. We started with 16, though, even though the conditions were kind of, well, not perfect. We got 16 drivers still out there racing. Yeah, and, the, you know, right now with the mixed track conditions, if, if they weren't so spread out, they're all running pretty similar times. Nobody's really faster than anyone on the slicks and wets right now. So who has made a pit stop that we can watch maybe work their way up through the... I would think... Grzelski yeah. is the first person to have pit. And just for an, you know a little time perspective, he lost a minute and three seconds in the pits. And, you know, like we said about pit loss time, yeah, I just don't think you can make that up, see. Well, let's look at the gap. You see the Grzelskis. You can see it right there. He's racing in 12th spot. He's got 27 seconds to get to, to Loudon. That's a long, that's a that's a long time. We'll keep an eye on it. 26 seconds with only uh, about eight minutes to get there. The gap yeah, between Burns he, and Polar a hard charger, too, yeah. remember. Yeah, this may be a case of you you make your bed on the on the pace lap and you're kind of stuck with it. <laughs> this thing will not give up. And Vincent Brain now gets the best of of, uh, of Pinky. Pinky beginning to drop. Brain now down into seven or six. He was racing a lot farther up. Look at that's a great camera shot there. They head down the long back stretch, hit into Canada corner. That's the right hander. Now we look at San Chinelli. We have not heard much about Milas. He's looking to make a move as well, and he does! As Sancinelli probably doesn't take that quarter the best racing line. Another driver who maybe was racing too hard early was Edgar Sancinelli. He was racing all the way up as high, I think, fourth position. Maybe used up this stuff. Yeah, him and Byfeld kind of suffering from the same thing. They're about two, three seconds off the pace of other guys on wets. I think you hit the nail right on the head. I think they drove too hard yeah. too early. You got to wonder if this is, this is all new to everybody, if this is not only going to be a lesson learned here today, but something they can apply to race number four, which is going to happen here in just a few minutes in the second half. Remember, what you want to think about, if you are Vincent Brame right now in fifth position, they invert the top five finishers. So Brain is looking, uh, uh, Vincent Bream is looking to be on pole. Right Sanchez now. is looking to take that final podium spot right now. He wants it back. Sanchez now getting up there. And he gets that pass made on Byfeld. My goodness. Your points leader dropping like a pigeon. Yeah, he really is. And, you know, Jan, he, he made that look easy. He carried a lot of speed through that previous corner, and he made it look real simple. There is a long way to go for Vincent Brave to get to him, and that would just be for fifth. Brave, uh, Pinky, uh, Pinky Brave would have to work his way all the way up about almost eight seconds to get to Byfield. So I think Byfield can't be happy about the way that his race is going. I guess he's going to feel 
take a little solace, Shaggy, in knowing that he'll get inverted probably to the first row. I was kind of thinking that in my head a little bit because they know the weather forecast just like we do. They know it's going to be yeah. pouring down rain, and uh, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to start fifth on that grid. You look at the battle down there for 12 or 10th spot, or no, it would be it would be 11th spot. You see Loudon and Grzelski. Let's bring up that pit window and that pit thing again and see who's made the pit, who's who is uh, leading all the guys. It's still Grzelski in 12th, the leader of all the cars who have pitted. I don't know if he has enough time. 10 seconds to get to Loud, perhaps. That's about two seconds per lap. That's a that's a tall order. He's driving his tail off, fastest lap of the race, uh, last lap, two minutes, six seconds. So he's two seconds faster than the leader, even. But, yeah. uh, oh. He's got about 10 seconds a lap on the guys at the front three in front of him. So he's going to he's gonna catch him, I think, on the last lap. Yeah, let me correct myself. Two seconds per minute, not two seconds And Red does that say that he loses it on slicks, and he's in the wall. <laughs> oh, no. And here comes uh, Brain continuing to drop as Milos makes his move up one spot. Milas perhaps with a shot to get to Vincent Green for that fifth spot if he could get there. He's only got about three and a half minutes to get it done, but he's coming. Yeah, last time by, Bream caught uh, Byfeld by four seconds, and he's only 1.7 second gap. We might have, Byfeld might lose another spot for this thing. Over. The dynamic of this race has been fascinating with the, with the tire wear and the tire change. San Chinelli trying to defend look what this man has done Doshiet has worked his way all the way up if it, he started dead last if i remember i don't have my standings over but i think it was back in the certainly in the last row he is our big mover yeah dead last up eight spots nicely done all this going on behind the 125 of david burns who's just out there having a sunday drive yeah. That 420 machine is all over the back of Byfelt. My goodness, we... <laughs> if you didn't know, if you were not, didn't watch the first round of this when they when they were in uh, uh, Brazil at Interlagos, you would think that Byfeld is, is not the driver he showed then. As Byfeld now down into fifth, I don't think Milas, Milas is now, we thought Brain might be doing, oh, Milas and Brain continuing to swap positions. Well, again, Bifel can take solace in knowing he'll get to start on the pole, but that's where he started this race, and it didn't turn out so well for him. And Deschette clicked off another one. He's up nine, and now he's about to get one more, I think. Yeah, look at that. My gosh, he's on a roll. Let's stay on this one. Brain clearly <laughs> struggling to... The clock cannot tick fast enough for Josh Brain right now. What a dynamic race. Side by side, you got to think that the car on the inside not only is in the preferred position, but also had the momentum and the draft, and he does get the fast pace. That is a name to watch out for. Clearly not a great qualifier, but when it comes to racing, Deschette can really get it done. And, you know, he... Obviously, great run, but he may be kicking himself that he turned it on a little late because he is real quick right now. One more spot, he'd be starting the next race in the front row. Some interesting things to watch. Groselski is about four seconds back of Bamber. You know, let's look at this driver. The car number 302 at 14th position. We haven't talked much about him. There's Simon working on Groselski of banana flavored machines if my rods and cones are correct let's call it citrus that covers whatever flavor they have. there we go not much battling going on with burns Povacek, sanchez green they've all seemed to lock in their position i think byfeld has settled into fifth don't want to undersell what Deschette might be able to do but i think that the eight seconds is probably a little too far to get there looks like everybody's set in we think the white flag is flying. You're looking at your leader, David Third Degree Burns. Many a championship in Formula Neagle. Well, not many, but certainly a, a handful. He comes across the line, and now we're going to get 
the white flag for Burns. Four miles to go. Here's a nice battle. Gruselski and Simon. Oh, that's not the racing line to take. Oh, and that's not what you want to bang yourself into there. As Gruselski falls almost to dead last. Neil Bamber and Klaus Loudon going at it. Bamber in the white and red machine. Light him up as the yeah. Marlboro makes the pass. Yeah, Stefan Malise looking for a move here, going into turn one. Going to think best of it. Get back in line. Got a whole lap to get it done. What we're going to do is we're going to watch the leader come across the line as these guys continue to battle. Then we'll go in checking some of these things we've been watching and see how they play out. So we're not going to go to the break right away as the leaders come around. We'll stick with you a little bit to see how some of these play out on these battles we've been watching. Milos gets the best of brain, and it looks like maybe Josh may be done. I don't know if he's going to be able to hang in there. There's our leader. A little bit kicking up some spray behind him. Heading through the kink, down the long back stretch. Now the left-hander. Coming up to the right-hander that is Canada, but he has plenty of time to get it right. A little bit of work to do on that beautiful gold chrome machine. Weave his way to the final corner. The right-hander. Nothing between him and a win, but the uphill straight. David, third degree burns, picks up. Race number three, round two, the win. Sanchez and Podocek. Go second and third. Bream coming across, and honestly, we look through, it looks like every, all the other battles have settled down. Is that going to come across the line? Everybody decided to settle down right now. Tip of the hat to the man who's going to get sixth position. Bichette with a great run. Well, with all the battles we think done, we'll right now take a short break as the rest of the field comes across the line. But don't go far because we're going to come right back and do it all again. We're going to invert the top five. So can Burns get another win? Well, if he does, he's going to have to do it from the inside of row three. Don't go far. You're watching the Richard Grip Network. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back to Road America and VGN's opening round coverage of the Andy Morgan Cup 36th season sanctioned by the Absolute Beginner League. You know, 
The best part about any doubleheader is the break between races. It's the perfect blend of the post-race high and the pre-race jitters. With that said, let's go ahead and show you the order of the last race. Now, remember, the top five are going to invert. I'll take the top five. I'll give the next five to my partner. David Burns, Yao Sanchez, Wojciech Podacek, Vincent Bream, and Marcus Beifeld. Look for Beifeld on the pole. Shaggy, who you have next? We got uh, our hard charger up 10 spots. Heck of a run for J.F. Dochette. Uh, he's going to finish P6. Stefan Malie is going to finish 7th. Josh Brain is going to get 8th. Edgar St. Chinelli is going to be 9th. And Lucas Peterson is going to round out the top 10. Let's flip the page and look at the next way that goes as we had 16 drivers here. I'll take the remainder of that for that. We saw uh, Milas in 7th position there. Brain, St. Chinelli, Peterson, Bamber, Simon as well, Sauer, Klaus Loudon. Bartos Jaselski had a great run. He was certainly up and down the grid. And Tony Hayes has pretty much put in the miles back there. Congratulations for him. They're out there practicing right now. How's the weather look? So it's raining, and actually, Soup, I've got to eat crow because uh, maybe I couldn't tell tires. I, I cheated here in between sessions. I turned on their race chat just to listen to uh -huh. those drivers talk and see what they were talking about. Those front guys, Soup, they started on dry tires. The people who pit started on wet and switched to dry tires. Interesting. I am so amazed with the way they drove those dry tires in those first three laps. They said it was one of the sketchiest things they've ever done. So hats off to those guys. Boy, you know, when, when, it, when the road conditions get tough, you can really see the talent come out there. So now, what are we looking at here? Is it? Do you think it's wetter than before? Or, or and I, I, We promise you, folks, next week we'll get our technology down so we can go ahead and maybe peek in and see what tires they're racing. It's all new to everybody here, and we're going to do a better job here on VGN in the upcoming season, so stick with us. Boy, the way I'm watching some of these guys drive, I think they're on slicks again. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, though, to see what they grid with because uh... – Race time, it's 424, and uh, we've got a 100% chance of rain until uh, 6.30 iRacing time. So uh, they're, they're going to get a full-on weather attack here the next 20 minutes. So I would start with wets, but I'm not the driver these guys are, Soup. You know, I'm not really good with math, but I think 100% means it's going to rain. So <laughs> we'll see how this plays out. We're glad that you were with us. Certainly an interesting dynamic going on with the weather and the inverted grid. I think the big news would be how poorly Marcus Byfield did. Now, we ran over this, the, uh, the finishing order, so basically they're going to grid up in the same order we gave you. The only difference is going to be what's going to happen in the top five. Marcus Byfield, who started on the pole now, coming into this event, he was your, your points leader. You got to think that Burns has has really picked up. Not only gets the bonus point for leading a lap. Not sure who got the fastest lap that last race, but there's a bonus point for that as well. Byfield, Burns, Brain, all the Bs up front. Podercheck and Sanchinelli. No, I did that wrong. Let me correct myself. That was horrible. Byfield, Bream, Podercheck, Sanchez, and Burns. Am I looking at that starting order? Vincent Bream is not there. Yeah, no, missed the oh. grid, it looks like. Late for the call. Well, you know... Oh, my goodness. When I look at this, Shaggy, uh, I tell you right now, if you were out there, you would not be Shaggy. You would you would be Moppy because, whoa, look how wet the track is compared to how it was before. Yeah, I think uh, everybody in pit road is going to have their umbrellas out for sure. It's This is going to be a way different race, and... Uh, the rooster tails weren't that bad as I thought they were going to be at the start of the last uh, feature, but boy, we're really going to get some kick up here going down the front stretch. So when we look at it, is this indeed Byfield is out there on the pole. Breen did not grid up, so it is Podocek will be there. That yeah, big winner's got to be Dechette, yeah. right? Because, yeah, I, I mean, he was a huge climber that last one. And who knows if he started up front, maybe he could have had a you know chance for the win. But now we'll get to find out him starting P3. Indeed. Look, that camera angles, they drive away from you. Byfeld in the, I'm going to give it a color shot, blue and yellow machine. Oh. 
<laughs> Nobody likes my color choice on that one. We'll call it multicolored. Sanchez next to him, supposed to grid up in fourth. He will move up into the front row. And that'll also bring up, like we talked about, that'll bring up uh, the shed in there as well. He slides up a row. Fascinating. Well, we saw Byfeld drop like a pigeon. Can he do better this time? I would think he's got certainly has the talent. Maybe he's learned a little bit from the first race. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the main benefits right now being out front, he he can he can park his car wherever he wants to, and you, you see a lot of times drivers want to hit the apex. It's kind of the opposite in the wet. There's going to be build up rubber there. They're going to be looking for different lines. If uh, somebody tries to. Uh, outbreak him and hit the apex they might pay for it who will be your big mover today well we'll find out what a place to have a have a wet race here at road america yeah because it's so big or so far around you almost wonder if it's raining everywhere oh look at that shot that's great Tip of the hat to iRacing for, took him a while. It's been a long time coming. Well worth it, Soup. Well worth it. Indeed. And I thought the racing, considering that they were not ideal conditions, they did put on a very good show. Yeah, especially in hindsight, finding out they were all on slicks. We didn't give them the credit they deserved. I kind of gave them the shaft there. Yeah. Um, They've gone through Canada, working their way to the final corner. Now it's a long, long time before they actually get to go here. Race number four, round number two from Road America, the Andy Morgan Cup. Three more rounds to go after this one. We hope you're here for all of them. All right, pace car, there's the opening. And he does not wait. Marcus Byfeld is ready to go. He's going to get the jump down into the first corner. Yao Sanchez is going to tuck into second simply. Look at the spray that they're putting up. Bocek, Bocek, Bocek in third. Oh, my goodness. There are some cars in there underneath all that spray. Everybody makes it around. Getting a little bit loose with Deschette, but he keeps it going straight. Yeah, he carried a lot of speed running that high line in one and two. And oh! do it again. Oh, his Bocek gets off track again on lap one. Tough, tough lap ones for him today. He is having a hard time early on as he loses the spot to Burns. To Shet up into third. Let's go up to the front. There might be a fight for the lead going into corner number five through all the spray. A defensive line taken by Byfeld. Not going to happen this time. A little further behind. Oh, we got a big pile up. Two cars are off. One of them is Josh Brain. The other one is Lu uh, Lucas Peterson. Corner number five. I think that was wet conditions. They just slid themselves right off into the wall. We'll take a look at it. Yeah, it looks like Lucas just uh, outbreaks himself a little bit and gets into some trouble. Where is he going? <laughs> that was. That did not work well. So two drivers. With that said, our leaders are coming around. Working on lap number one. Coming in with a large lead, something we would expect from Micah Byfield. But uh, the racing is early so far. So let's run down your top five: Byfield, Sanchez, Potocek, Burns, and. GF10 to Shad, really a great driver. Keep an eye on him. We're going to learn more about him. Hopefully, he'll be able to finish in the podium. We'll get a talk with him at the end. Yeah, and right now, following Burns, he gets a free driver's lesson, too. So he's already good, going to get even better. So after Vocek Podocek lost the position to Sanchez, he gets back around. Sanchez not giving up, uh, not surrendering Casper there as he continues to chase. As they go up the hill, 
on the main straight. Let's stay on this one because you think somebody may duck out of the spray. Not only do you pull out of the out of the draft, but you maybe get some clear vision as well. Ah, uh, they all stay in position, heading down into that first corner. Yeah, Burns. tough one with the way the puddles are piling up. I don't think you want to be too aggressive in turn one today. Let's go ahead and check on Neil Bamber. Oh, we have it off in front the of Bamber. That is the shed, yes. Oh, and somebody off track behind him. Mali somehow. So the shed goes off. And then they were there was a side-by-side -side battle there between two cars, but Belize went off on the inside. Sanchez goes off. Sawyer loses a spot to Grzelski. And the Sanchez going off. Burns was able to get by for that final podium spot. Deschette is still off trying to pick up. I don't know if the car is damaged or he just lost all momentum. But look at it. He's in a battle right now with Ludwig Sauer. That Sauer in the blue car. Oh, careful, boys, boys. They almost get together. Yeah, Deschette got the elbows out there trying to hold on to that position that he's in, trying to hold on to nine. We are fans of big movers. I want to talk about we didn't give him much love in the first race. Hello, Tony Hayes, car number 75. Currently racing in seventh position. He's all by himself. Well done, Mr. Hayes. Yeah, and in hindsight, I think we found out he was that first car to pit, so he had probably gone out there on wets and realized that was the wrong move. Got it. Boy, a different racing dynamic than we had in the first race where I thought they handled it rather well. They're really struggling out there. Byfeld comfortably out of front. He's got four seconds on Polter check. Burns really not within striking distance of the third place driver. That's not the case, though, for Yao Sanchez. Let's look at this battle for fourth. There it is, Bert, or the battle for third. Let's stay on it a bit as we watch Sanchez get back a little farther back. There's some problems going on. Neil Bamber, oh, you know, you talk about guys who are on the move. He is up six spots. Bambi. Certainly got his legs working. All right. There is Sanchez looking on the inside of Burns. Not going to get it this time. He's got plenty of time to get it going, though. Still got himself about 14 and a half minutes of racing to go. We ride on board. Look at that. The American driver. What Podichak off. Oh, and he rejoined. Burns almost got into him, but Burns is going to take over P2 here, and Sanchez is going to follow him by. Podacek made the mistake, then came back on. Burns got slipped right by him. Burns almost got into him. And then he also lost the spot. We talked about it to Sanchez as well. Burns getting loose there. That's going to open the door for us. Nope, Sanchez is going to think better. Going to drop back in line. But, man, we got a heck of a show here for P2. I'll say. And don't look now, but Bamber, he's coming up. He wants P2. He's going to get in this picture pretty fast. And Sanchinelli, he's putting some pretty good lap times down. We're going to have a lot of cars battling for P2. Byfield, Burns, Sanchez, Podacek, Bamber all out there right now running in that order. You are glad you are with us here. Nice battle going on. This is Burns Sanchez. Podercheck under attack from Bamber. Boy, you said it, Shaggy. That's a great looking car that Neil's racing out there. Boy, a nice paint job. That's the way a car should look. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, you know, you, you expect the, the cigarette company to be smoking, and he's gone now. Sanchez is going to take over P2 from Burns. It, Looked like Burns almost gave it to him. Maybe he isn't happy with the car right now. Just going to take it easy. So Jan Sanchez. Moving up. He's not giving up. We ride off the the tail, I believe. Of, is that Byfield we're racing on? No, that's Sanchez. We're looking at Sanchez. We're looking back at Burns and Podercheck. Podercheck in the yellow flavored machine. And Bamber on the hunt. 
45. Sancinelli a little too far back really could be much of that argument. Quite a contrast that Marcus Byfeld is having compared to the round of the opening round race where he's comfortably out there in front right now. Holy moly! Ooh. I think we saw the same yeah. thing yeah. there. Yes, we did. Bamber getting the back of Poda check a little bit, just different breaking points. You see uh, Bamber's got a little front end damage. That shouldn't I, bother him too bad. I though. thought I saw some pieces out there. Oh, and Sanchez off went off. Right, right. That's Sanchez that goes off in front, and he loses the spot. Nobody wants P2 right now. Nobody. Sanchez loses the positions to Burns, Podacek, and Bamber. Sancinelli even gets the spot. So, oh, my goodness, as he drops well back in the order. The rain really affecting these guys right now. Yeah, and all that, the, the already wet track doesn't like when that grass and mud gets on your tires. So you, you pay for that for a couple turns as you're seeing, you know, Sanchez. He can't even really keep up with Sancinelli right now. Things beginning to settle down a little bit. Is there a little more gaps between the guys? Let's check in on Tony Hayes. You know, he was up a few spots. I think uh, reality has caught back up to him as he's now fallen back into 10th. Nevertheless, a nice run from him. Looks like he's going to be comfortable in fifth. Chaggy, you want to talk about a big mover? It's Chris yeah, Gr Grizzlecki. Yeah, he's up eight spots, up to P7. He was really qu quick last race there towards the end, but we saw those last like two or three laps. He was just pushing it too hard and wrecked the car a couple times. But we know he's got speed. We just got to see if he can catch these guys. Let's check in on Burns and Podocek. That looks like it's a, a type one really, you never know. The problem is you think Burns is comfortable in second, but second position has been really the, <laughs> that's not where you want to be. No, and put a check a little loose on entry. And now Bamber, he wants that biggest mover spot. If he takes this over, he's up eight spots. But he's going to think better of it going through the S's there. The battle there between uh, Podercheck and Bamber, and then there's another going on behind Sanchinelli and Sanchez. You see that a little farther back. Sanchez, sure enough, picks up that spot after going with the off. They talk about comers and goers. What you got are, are, are goers and comers, and then goers and comers again, depending on how many mistakes they made. Burns in second, Podercheck in third. Great camera shots from our director. Ryan Seneca, everything. Now they're beginning to settle down a bit. Bamber with visions of an interview, if he can get to Podercheck. There's Milos and Sauer. Sauer in his familiar blue machine, working on the back of Milos. That'll be for eighth spot. Coming right at you. Milos was comfortable enough to not have to worry about defending as Ludwig's hour a little farther back. Oh! There's the pass made as Sauer gets it done. Oh no! You know what? I thought he took it in too deep, and sure enough, the car got loose. Well, he had the he made the pass for about a breath until Ludwig put it in the wall. Yeah, and it's uh that thing's not driving straight. He got in the wall pretty good. He's gonna have to come in and use the pits, I think. Well, you can really see the reflection that iRacing does here on the track when it, when the water begins to puddle. And you can even see it close to the uh, on the inside where the where the uh, bumps are there, the inside barricades, the rumble strips. Sanchez and Sancinelli. Oh, and talking about the detail, look at you know, that's what took him so long to come out with it. That detail is so important. Drivers need to know where yeah. those puddles are to cool off tires, to oh. avoid in the apex. It, they did such a great job. That's all you could, reason. You could see Sanchez get loose there, and Sancinelli, as you watch, that Jan was just working the car. Sancinelli wants it. There's somewhere in there, folks. The, the spray on the right, that's Sanchez. The spray on the left, or the spray on the right is Sancinelli. The spray on the left is Sanchez. Which rooster tail is fastest? About seven minutes to go. Again, Sanchez. Oh, off track in the wall. Bambi has found the wall. Oh, that's so sad.
Yes, he's had a couple incidents already, and that car does not look drivable. I thought it was I thought it was sad when they shot his mom, but but this rivals it as Bambi is is a this is not good times. Uh, yeah, and Sanchinelli, he really got hurt by that. We saw he was all over the back of Sanchez trying to make a move, but when Bamber came back on, yeah. Sanchez was able to go by and Sanchinelli just got stuck there. Give Bamber credit. He's still racing. <laughs> he's got a the car's a little shorter than when he started, and here he goes. He's not done yet. Look at that. Uh, he's not driving that thing like he just spun out. He's going hard. Big move there. And making the pass, I wasn't sure he was going to get it woed up, but he does. My, I'll tell you, Neil Bamber likes the wet. Sanchez, not done. He will be in the toe. See if he makes a move down here as he tries to move to the inside. Man, it is really coming down here in Wisconsin. No signs of letting up, Sue. No, no. I hope you brought in your cheese because it's getting moldy in this moisture. Great battle between Bamber, Sanchez, and Sanchinelli. We are focusing on the car in the middle. Cannot. Oh, and he goes around right in front of Sanchinelli. Oh, our commentator had the sense that, I mean, our director had the sense there. There's the yellow car of, is that Milas that I'm looking at there? Going, oh, that's Grisecki who was able to avoid that incident. And he picks up another spot. Great run for the number 13. And one more, he climbs into the top five. We'll be up 10 spots. Our contract with the Absolute Beginner League makes us put the camera on the leader for a minimum number of seconds. So we're going to do that right now so that we're not in violation of the terms of the agreement. Marcus Byfield, holy moly, has got himself a 20-second wet weather lead. Burns a couple seconds on Podacek. Yeah, and you know, I was kind of talking to you guys. I was amazed. These good drivers, they never turn it off. You're talking about that 20-second lead suit. His last lap, he just ran the fastest lap of the race. But I felt no turn off. He's going hard every lap, even though he looks like he's got this thing locked up. Well, to drill down a little bit farther in the reasons to run so hard, there are those bonus points for fastest lap. And when, it's, when you have a, a, a rules package that is only five rounds and just a few races, maybe maybe seven or eight races long, every point is important in Byfield, especially after the poor result he had in race number three to open today's broadcast. Uh, he's looking to pick him up where he can. Sanchez, uh, boy, you talk about feast to famine there. He was racing as far up as second position, now finds himself down in eighth and struggling. Looking to maybe get one of those spots back here on Stefan, who's in P7. Yeah, and we saw he, he does have speed, just been a little inconsistent over driving the car in some corners and getting sideways. But if he can put it together, he's a quick car. We don't have to talk big picture here because Burns won the opener. He is in second here in this one. That's going to be a great points day for him. A first and a second is more points than a first and a fifth. Duh, as we talk about the results of Marcus Byfield. Oh, that's not the racing line you want to take. That was uh, Sanchinelli, who was in fifth spot. Does not lose a spot, though, but that does <laughs> just whet the appetite for Grisowski now. Yeah, he pulled it down to almost three seconds. He's He's got to be licking his lips. He saw him overrun that. Edgar Sanchinelli has been racing in the Absolute Beginner League for a long time. He's This is one of the best races I've seen him have. Very, very competitive right now. This is this battle with Milos and Sanchez. I think my my gut tells me that Milos is in the best position here. He's, Sanchez is going to be hard-pressed to catch him. There's Bamber. Oh, Sanchez wrecked again. He, could, he was really, you can see him working hard. And uh, that might be that might be the Wisconsin afternoon for him. 
pair of yellow cars on the screen right now. That is number 13. Here he is. That is Grzelski. He is closing in on Sancinelli. Let's stay on this one. He weaves to the right. He weaves to the left. Is that the pass for position or was that a lap car? That's a lap car he goes around. He's still got a, about, about four seconds to get up. Let's ride on board with Grzelski and see if we can actually see his target. There he is. See that little ball of spray up there? That's our man he's after. And, you know, that can that can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing, as we've seen Sanchez, you know, really trying to get those targets in front of him. It can push you to overdrive, so you got to have a fine line. Is that's, ooh, it looked like his lucky <laughs> baby went in a little too hard. The apex was somewhere to his right there. I'll be honest with you, Shaggy, that never makes me drive faster. Than you want me to slow down? Put the guy I'm chasing in front of me. Look at that camera shot as he coming your way, heading down into corner number five. They get it woed up for this left-hander. There you go, and we're looking there. That, that's car number 57. That is Edgar Sancinelli. You know, Sancinelli only got just a tick over a second to get to Bamber. What a job from Bamber. We really wrote him off because that car was such so damaged, but looks pretty now, thanks to the magic of sim racing. And he's going to get himself a fourth. Yeah, tough break for him. He's going to wonder what could have been. You yeah. know, only eight seconds off P2, and I guarantee you he lost at least 10 in that spin. So he's going to be kicking himself. I want to talk about another driver real quick. Car number 75. We talked about Tony Hayes. He's down. He's up. He's down. He's back up into eighth spot again. Well done. Just a quiet race, just putting in the laps, not causing any trouble, going to get himself a decent points. Yeah, that's what it's about at this point, just being smooth. And then as I say oh. that, I'm on board with him. He almost never drove too. So I think I got to get out of these people's onboard cameras. I'm giving them bad luck today. Oh, we were we had the the viewers got to see it from them coming at you, and you could see Hayes the car wiggle left and it was wiggle right as he was really fighting to keep it going. Well, Definitely driving in back. car number 105. That is Marcus Byfill. He came into this event today as the point leader. We're right on board with the Swedish driver right now. Coming out of the right-hander there. I know what he's going to do, what, what Marcus likes to do. He likes to, they call it some fish is what they have. It's a special fish in Sweden there that they cook up. He has it every time he, he wins a race. It's going to be good dining tonight. The opening heat did not go well. Race number three as he finishes fifth, but just taking that pretty multicolored machine around the track for just the final corners. He's got himself a 23 second lead. In fact, he could probably pull over, maybe marinate that Lukovic a little bit and still have time to get the win. Yeah, he's been in a class of his own in this uh, second feature. He really showed uh, he can drive in the wet and, uh, you know, just to make to my point earlier, his last lap again, his fastest lap of the race, he hasn't stopped. Contrary to my belief, triple digit cars are never fast, but that's not the case. That this is probably the race, the exception that proves the rule, as we have car 105 and car 125 going one and two. Usually you see three digits on a car. Yeah. Every extra digit, that's, that's about a tenth of a second lap. Extra. Down the final backstretch, heading towards, uh, I can see where they are, through the final, down into the into Canada corner. Just a few corners to go. Really no battles on the track as everybody finally got those things all sorted out. We started with 16 drivers. 12 of them are going to finish on the lead lap. Really a story for all the drivers. If we had guys coming up, Shed well down there in, in 12th position. He was racing up front. Brain was all over the place. Out of the final corner. Round number two, race number four. They're happy in Sweden as Marcus Byfield gets the win. It's going to be a, a sometime later this evening when Burns gets around the track. There you see third degree in the top of your screen there for a minute. That was Vocek Podercek. He's had a good point scale as well. Plus, he got to he got to see some of the uh, Wisconsin countryside. So not only does he get good points, but also 
took the scenic route. And what a save for Sancinelli. He's going to come across top five. About a minute yeah. ago, he's trying to run down Bamber. He had all four tires in the grass, and he barely lost any time. Heck of a save for him on that last lap. You can see the rest of the drivers there. No real battle. Drazelski, Milos, Hayes. We talked about him. Sanchez is going to come in. Finishing on the lead lap as well. Sour Brain and Duchesne. All the cars on the lead lap. With that said, we're going to take a short break. Don't go far because we'll come back to run down the finishing order of this event. Talk to a few of the drivers who did well today before we put a lock in the gate. We're watching the Virtual Bit Network. Don't go far. This is iRacing, the world's premier online racing game. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat to experience today's newest form of competitive motorsport, virtual racing, all from your home PC. Race virtually in indoor series from NASCAR, IndyCar, IMSA, the world of outlaws, Aussie supercars and more. Take on legendary circuits like Daytona, Silverstone and the Nürburgring. Join iRacing's global online racing community and get on track today at iRacing.com. Welcome back to Road America and the Virtual Grip Network's second round coverage for races three and four of the Absolute Beginner Leagues and the Morgan Cup. And my gosh, what fun we had today with some wet weather and some mistakes on track and some superb performances. Let's go ahead and bring up the standings for you right now. There you see it. I'll take the top ten on the list here. Marcus Beifeld started in fifth position, worked his way all the way back up. In, uh, let me apologize. Marcus Barfield goes wire to wire for the win. David Burns got the win in the opening round and a second here today. Great points day for Burns as he closes in on the Swedish driver, who is our points leader coming into this event. Bocek Kodacek gets a third position. Neil Bamber, he was up. He was down. He was in the grass. He was in the wall. He kept going. Never say die. Neil gets fourth position with Edgar Sancinelli. Having maybe the best race of his bar casted absolute beginner league career. Bartez Griskowski, man, he is fun to watch as he climbs his way through the grid again for a second time. Stefan Milas, well, he's going to settle for uh, seventh position. Tony Hayes, very nice run from him. He's going to be happy with Ace. Rounding out your top 10, Jon Sanchez and Ludwig Sauer. All right, Shaggy, who you got left there in the back half of this thing? Josh Brain was gonna fit. He's gonna finish P11, down three spots. Dechet, we saw him with a great run in the first uh, feature tonight. A little bad luck here. He's gonna finish 12th. Lucas Peterson's gonna finish 13th, and uh, Marcel Simon is gonna be the last car on the lead lap. He's gonna finish 14th, and then we'll be followed up by Klaus Loden and Vincent Brain. All right, we're gonna see who our director is gonna bring in to let us talk to somebody here. I get to talk to David Third Degree Burns, who got the win in the opening heat, and then in race number four, he got second place. All right, David, I want to go back to the first race because I think that one it was more intriguing. We weren't sure what the tire situation was. You started, you raced that thing on, on slicks, on dry tires? Oh, yeah. Yep, I gambled on the dry. Were you happy with the gamble? Not for the first two laps, I wasn't. <laughs> Even the pace lap, I was oh, I was having a few moments of... There was a couple of puddles on the inside where, you, where your car was lining up. That When I went through them, the car just went straight on a little bit. So I was like, oh dear, I was very nervous for the first two or three laps. Okay, this is all new to me. So, so help me in. So 
So were you able to predict the weather? Did you think that it was going to be, well, obviously you thought it was going to be dry enough for dry tires. Uh, was, okay, was that the correct, I guess it was the correct decision as you got the win. Well, yeah, I, I mean, iRacing's weather forecast is actually pretty good because it gives you 15-minute intervals. And when we went to the grid, I saw that there was no rain for the next uh, 45 minutes. So I was like, well, I know there's a bit of wet on the track. So I was, I, it was a gamble because a lot of people put wets on. And for the first two laps, Marcus was pulling away, but then it started to dry out, and that's where the slicks come into the road. I'm going to drill down a little farther. Are the conditions different from practice? to the race or is it is it similar to what you practice is that what you get or do they change a lot um well we went with a fixed weather for this one we predicted okay. what the weather was going to do so practice was a little bit wet so that people had a chance to practice and then in we we tried to make it dry for heat one it wasn't actually supposed to be wet at the start of it so it was a little bit of a oh what's this <laughs> that was fun okay then let's go to the second one much much heavier rain on the second one no had to be wet tires for this one right Oh God, yes, it was definitely wet tires, but I screwed myself because there's a setting in your car you're meant to put on the traction control and the ABS for wet. I left it in the dry setup and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't make the car drive. Interesting, interesting. So uh, traction control's gotta be a lifesaver in, in, uh, uh, in wet conditions. Well, yeah, the minute I changed it, because I think what well, my lap times at the start were 2.32, 2.33, and I was really struggling to put any power down. But the minute I changed the traction control settings on one of the straights, I was doing 2.29s, 2.28s, and then I could start I could start to realize where the lines were. All right, well, that Swedish guy is fast, but a first and a second today is going to keep him honest. So uh, you're going to close the gap on the points. Good luck to you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Great race that was. David Burns, your, I'm going to call it your overall winner here today with the first and the second. Shaggy, you got somebody else? You got Vocek Potocek. Hey, Vocek. It's uh, Shaggy up here in the booth, man. You got a copy? Yeah, I'm here. Well, hey, we, we asked David, what was your call in that uh, first race? Did you start with slicks or did you start with wets? Yeah, we started with slicks. We, we talked on Discord that uh, we should gamble. And surprisingly, it paid off. Although... First couple of laps were really <clears throat> intense and difficult, but uh, if you look at the end of the results, yeah, it paid off. Uh, unfortunately, I had a moment on the last lap going into the last corner. Uh, it cost me one position, but still, it was uh, it was good fun. Yeah, that that was uh, that was very exciting because. Uh, well, I said on the broadcast, I admitted to my mistake. I thought you guys were all on wet tires. I thought you guys no, all no, were no. wet. It was really neat uh, seeing a difference. I guess we heard uh, Burns say that uh, Marcus started the race on wets. So I'm guessing that's where the big lap time difference came in at the end. Yeah. I, really I think, neat seeing strategy play out. Yeah, I, I think everybody around us was uh, on, uh, on wet tires. And when the truck just started to dry out, uh, uh, the difference between the lap times were just astonishing. It was so easy to overtake somebody, and it paid off. Like I said, uh, first two laps were two, three laps were really difficult. Uh, I, I had a feeling that I had to actually stop uh, in every corner just to rotate the car. But uh, yeah, at the end, it was uh, it was a good decision. Vocek, it's super. You know, we talked before the season started that, that tire changes during like a 40-minute endurance race really, even through 40 minutes, aren't going to be something you want to do because it takes too long. But maybe, maybe in conditions of changing, maybe changing from wet to dry might be something that we could see in an endurance race? Uh, in endurance race, yes, but not in the heat race. Not I in think, the spring. Yeah, I think that uh, depending on the track like this one, that the, the, the pit stop takes just too much time and it just do not pay off to uh, go to the pits and change the tires but in uh, like you said in endurance race probably yes boy i tell you the weather makes this really exciting congratulations on a good day we'll see you down the road yeah thank you we'll check, we'll check. shaggy before we go to the to signing off here and tell them what's coming up I'll tell you, this is my first rain event. It is fascinating. And tip the hat to iRacing. It looked great. Yeah, man. These things really are a blast. And 
you know, we, we got to figure it out there through the interviews why uh, Marcus uh-huh. was so slow there in that first feature. And it just shows, you know, maybe they give us one of these 45-minute races where the track uh, starts wet and uh, they get no rain during the race. Oh, boy. We're going to see a lot of interesting things play out this season. Oh, boy. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. If you did, we're going to do it again. We're going to bring it up to you right now. Now, next week, next Sunday, we're going to be here again, but it won't be in these GT3 cars. We're flipping back over to Formula Eagles. That's going to be the open wheelers, and we're going to, ha, ah, my goodness, where the rents are high and the seabirds cry, uh, cry to the dunes of Zandvoort. Oh, that's going to be fun. That's going to be April 14th. That's going to be in a week from today. But before then, you might want to watch some more VGN. Do you like what we do here? Well, how about the Pretty Good Racing League? That's their premier series. Darlington Raceway, Season 6 is going to be Week 26, Tuesday night, April 9th, 8.50 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're in Europe, you'll have to do the math, but you'll figure it out. Those broadcasts, future broadcasts, past broadcasts, are all a production of the Virtual Grip Network. With that said, I'm going to head into the coat closet, see if I can find your, your rain slicker, and here's your little yellow rain cap. With that, until next time, have fun storming the castle. Yeah.